preachers at the Hansi Place School. He's passionate about giving speeches and preaching. Amen. Charles has preached at several churches, including those of the Northeastern Conference, Solid Rock, SDA, and many others. Charles is highly motivated and strives to do his best always. He is a mother student, and his lifelong goal is to become a missionary doctor. Amen. This morning, his mom is here with him, Mrs. Clark. Sister Clark, where are you? His sister, Shanika, his brother, Jason, his cousins, Vijay, and his aunt, Janice, and his family friend, Sister Tom. So can you please stand so we can recognize you? Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, these are the folks involved in training and guiding him in the direction that he should go. Amen. Let us pray that God will use Charles in a dynamic way as he preached the word of God to us today. But before he comes to us, our special music will be brought to us by me. Amen.
Lord. Happy Sabbath, Church. The title of my sermon is Go for the Gold. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning and for giving us another day of life, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity for all of us to gather here for our adventure and Pathfinder Day, Lord. Please help us to have a wonderful day, Lord. Please bless us, bless us and keep us, Lord. Help us never to leave you and never to forget you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Most of us watched the recently concluded Olympics in England and enjoyed the moments when our favorite athlete won the gold medal. It brought excitement and joy as they stood on the podium to receive their hard-earned prize. I believe that the Olympic Games are similar to the Christian life. It seems similar to the Christian effort to obtain eternal life, to win the crown that is promised to all those who run the Christian race well. I believe that we are all Olympians striving for the gold in the Christian life. Yes, I do believe that the Olympic Games are similar to the Christian life. Philippians 3, 13 to 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. I have never been to the Olympics, and that's okay, because I am in a bigger race now. I am in the Christian race. In this race, every Christian is a participant, and the good news is that we are not running against each other, but we are running against ourselves. And everyone who does well will win a crowd. I want to win in the Christian race. How about you? Yeah. I don't just want a silver or a bronze. I am going for the gold. Yeah. However, the truth is that to become an Olympic, an, an Olympic champion has its cost. The athlete in some cases is separated from their families and friends and must live in training centers where they can be coached and trained. Big Macs and french fries are off limits for them. From early in the morning to late at night, athletes concentrate on the one thing that is preparing them to win the gold. This matter of running the race and running it well requires that every one of us believers take the Christian life seriously. Amen. To be all that we can be for God requires that we focus every moment of our lives on the purpose and plan that God has for us as a believer. Amen. Because if we do not take the Christian race seriously, we will not be the runner we can be or run in the race that we could run. The focus that Paul describes requires that we run this race with certain things in mind. Notice what this focus involves. That the runner must be forgetful of that which is behind him. When Paul spoke of forgetting the things that are behind, he was not speaking about blanking out the memory of the past. We know that would be impossible and unrealistic. But what Paul is trying to talk but what Paul is talking about or is trying to say is that being influenced or assured by the past. The sad news is that there are many who are haunted, hampered, and hounded by their past sins. 
Their failure and sin distress them, defeats them, and seeks to destroy them. The devil constantly brings up their sin to keep them in bondage. Winston Churchill, on one of his visits to the United States, remarked in the course of a conversation that if the present is calling with your past, there can be no future. You can be certain that if the past is not dealt with, it will deal with you. If we are to run for the gold, we must forget that which is behind us, Paul says. To go for the gold, the runner must be focused on that which is before him. We read in verse 13, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. A runner must keep his eyes on the finish line. A runner cannot watch the crowds in the stands or even be focused on the course on the course in front of him or on or on what others are doing. He must be focused on the course in front of him and the finish line before him. The words reaching forth give us the picture of a runner headed towards the finish line. It is the last lap and he is coming down the home stretch. Every muscle is straining. The heart and lungs are pounding in their chest and they are gasping for each breath of air. They are giving everything they have reaching forth to finish the race and to win the gold. That is how we are to run our race. We must be totally focused, allowing nothing to distract us. It is giving our all to win the gold. Someone once said that we are too near the crowd to lay down the cross. He said that we are too near the finish line to give anything less. The gold is before us and we must reach forth to win it. The writer of Hebrews had the same thought in mind in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. He said, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Don't look behind you. Look before you. You don't look around you. Look above you and beyond you. Don't be distracted. Be focused. Amen. As someone said, work is hard. Distractions are plentiful. Time is short. Yes. Keep running with all you have to win the goal. Amen. What would make an athlete train, sacrifice, and make the commitments they make? It is the thought of one day winning the goal. That is the one deed that holds them, captivates them, motivates them, and drives them. There are different ways of being motivated to do something. In verse 14, Paul speaks of what motivated him. We read, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The mark for which he pressed. <coughs> Paul said, I press toward the mark. The mark of which he spoke of was the finish line. Amen. <laughs> Paul was consumed with not only running his race, but also finishing it. He dreamed of the day when he hit the tape and crossed the finish line. Many runners have started the race, but did not finish it. Many have dropped out, some fell out, and others were kicked out. But thank God for those that did finish the race. Amen. As 
believers, we represent a heavenly country, and we have not been left here just to start the race, but we have been left here also to finish the race. As a Christian child, I purpose to go for the gold in my schoolwork and in everything that God asks me to do, because I know that I am special. Ridicule cannot sway me. I am strong. Obstacles cannot stop me. I hold my head high, proudly proclaiming my Christian uniqueness. I hold my pace, continuing forward, even through adversity. I am proud of my faith and my heritage. I am confident that I will achieve my every goal. I am becoming that God wants me to be. I am a Christian child. I am a child of God. And by God's grace, I will run this race with patience and endurance. You see, in heaven, there won't be any metal detectors. When we enter heaven's gates, the old terrorist Satan will be destroyed forever. It is interesting to know that in some aspects, the Olympic Games are also not like the Christian life. You see, at the Olympics, the gold is given to the one who merits the best performance. However, obtaining eternal life has nothing to do with our efforts. Our works are the fruit of our relationship with Jesus. We are saved totally by Jesus' victory and not by any works on our part. Today, I am glad that we do not have to obtain eternal life by our spiritual efforts or by our works because we could never do enough to gain eternal life. In a recent cross-country race, 123 runners missed a turn. Only one competitor, Mike, stayed on the 10,000 meter course and began waving for fellow runners to follow him. He was only able to convince four others to follow him. You see, Mike ran correctly. He made a decision not to follow the crowd and he was able to finish well. Today, I encourage you to run the race correctly and to never follow the crowd at work, at school, or at play. Let us finish the race marked out for us by none other but by Jesus himself. Let us go for the goal. When we come to the end of the road, can we say with Paul, I have kept the faith? Second Timothy 4 verse 16 says, but the Lord stood by my side and gave me strength. Paul did not live the perfect life, but Paul gave it all that he had. Revelation 3 verse 11 says, hold on so that no one will take your crown. Let us hold on till Jesus comes. The Bible says that someday Christians will receive their true reward. I can just imagine the celebration of victory that awaits us when we all get to heaven. A parade will go right down the golden streets of the new Jerusalem with the saints wearing their glittering crown with singing and great joy. Singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Those who hope in the Lord will inherit the earth. Amen. Jesus died on the old rugged cross almost 2,000 years ago. He completely paid for your sins and mine. The prize will be yours. Amen. Let us allow Jesus to take the weight of our bad tempers or evil habits so that we can shine for him. Amen. Paul does not say to lay aside a few of the weights, but he says to lay aside every weight. It is only when we surrender our all to Jesus 
that we can be real winners. Amen. Let us be winners. Let us go for the gold.
now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Attention. Half 
find this adventurous master guys right and left face. Pathfinders, Adventures Master Guys, Mark Time, March! <laughs>